Hello world, yes, this is Eric Knowles and um, I'm here uh, to give my fourth talk relating to uh, René Lalique um, and um, it's uh, it's got a lot of images this talk and uh, I'm basically going to be looking at vases and um, this is pure self-indulgence because I've been going through all my images and trying to decide which of the best part of 150 vases um, I want to talk about. So um, normally these talks go on for um, around about 10 minutes um, and I'm taking a chance because I was told a long time ago that most people's concentration span uh, watching anything uh, online is uh, is little more than three and a half minutes. So I'm hoping that the images will capture your imagination. But um, here is uh, René, uh, René Lalique. And uh, um, uh, this photograph, as I used last time, I believe, uh, dates to around about 1902 and 1903. But the vases I'm going to show you um, um, span the years 1919 to 1929. OK, um, he carried on designing vases well into the 1930s. But these these are my favourites. So let's start with um, this one. Now, this is Ceylan. Um, it's a firm favourite with anybody and everybody who sees it. The first time I took a piece of Lalique glass onto, a, onto the a BBC studios in Pebble Mill uh, for a programme called Pebble Mill at One, um, this vase uh, had everybody coming down from the offices onto the studio floor just to, to look at it and, and gaze at it because it is quite special. Uh, when I was a porter at Bonham's way back, I remember seeing this for the first time in an auction and I saw the actual auction catalogue where this was described as Ceylan, um, uh, moulded in a low relief with pairs of lovebirds, which um, had me somewhat uh, amused because uh, coming from near Burnley, um, we call them budgies. But either way, for the benefit of Knightsbridge, they became lovebirds. And it's in this lovely opalescent glass. Now, let me just explain very briefly. Opalescent glass is uh, is created in such a way that the glass mix has got uh, a couple of specific fluorites. It's also got a tiny amount of, um, of um, let me remember, it, um, blah, 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 blah. come on, come on, come on. It's, uh, yes, I've got it now, cobalt oxide. Thank you. You're getting this live. Right, once again, from somewhere in the Chiltern Hills. And um, the idea being that um, the chemical mix um, it, it gives a reaction. So when the glass is cooling, uh, the thicker areas take longer to cool and become more opaque. Um, as regards the thin areas, they tend to be obviously less opaque. And as for the, the bluey tinge, well, that is given by the use of cobalt oxide. And, and that's, that's it in a, in a nutshell. Um, or is it? Well, anyway, ask a chemist. They'll, they'll tell you far more. Let's have a look at the next uh, image because I love this vase. Uh, this vase is called Egrets. Um, and it is just it's just so special um it's got this very japanese influence the design is intricate and yet it's subtle uh because the imagery it sort of it seems to grow out of out of the out of the base and um and the, the uh, quite often the detail is heightened by using um stain um or patine as the french call it and then what about this one this is violette it's so simple um it is for me it is a, one of those yes please can i have it for christmas um because the design makes use of opalescent um its simplicity in itself um it is just the consummate ultimate um art vase uh next one um and this is i'm never sure how to pronounce this as dana dana diet Danadies or whatever. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, my my French is somewhat wanting. Um, for some reason, um, the boys at my school were taught German and the girls were taught French. Why am I telling you these things? Because here I am in self-isolation and if I don't talk to somebody, I'm going to go bonkers. So I might as well speak to the green dot knowing that you're, uh, you're paying attention. 
Either way, um, it is the water carriers. It is exquisite. Um, when it comes to figural decoration, uh, Lalique is the great master. And again, you've got these sort of classical uh, figures um, with pouring torrents coming out of, uh, out of wa water jars, which are held on the shoulder. Um, and then the ultimate, I think, um, in opalescence uh, has to be this. This is Bacants. Um, and yes, they, they, it has been reprised, uh, Lalique, um, in recent years, but um, it is a firm favourite. It is uh, a, a frieze of what appear to be uh, cavorting Bacchanalian figures. And remember, this was a, a, an ancient Greek religion um, that was based upon the worship of Dionysus and and that entailed a lot of drinking. So um, these girls are, uh, they're, they're probably over the limit, uh, it's fair to say. And in all fairness, uh, and I, I have no wish to appear sexist, but Lalique tends to concentrate on very you know, lithe, not quite stick-thin female figures. But in, in defence, these girls uh, tend to be a little bit more Rubinesque if I dare say that. Um, but it is a tour de force. I mean, this one came out in 1927. So let's leave um, the human forms. Let's move on to, let's not move on to fish. Um, and here we've got a, a, a vase, which um, is called, straightforward, poisson. Um, and as you can see, it is in this sort of ready amber color. Now, colors, whether translucent or, or opaque um, are very much at the top of the tree as far as Lali collectors are concerned. Um, and this one makes makes a good use and of, of, of what I would call naturalistic form. Whereas when we look at the next image, uh, Panthier, uh, this one is very much a stylized design. Now, in fairness, um, um, scholars are out on this one. Uh, all the scholars, by the way, that I know tend to be, uh, wait for it, um, in France, in Paris. Um, and I've met the definitive expert, and I know he's the definitive expert because he told me he was the definitive expert. So, I know, modesty is obviously a trait that we both share. Uh, but in this case, um, the, the debate is, is this Lalique or is it Lalique? And by that, um, is it René Lalique or is this Suzanne Lalique, his daughter? His daughter was a very accomplished uh, designer in in her own right and is is better known for her designs on uh, on porcelains, uh, certainly Haviland and Serve and one or two other uh, premier uh, factories operating in France during the, uh, the 1920s, 1930s. Well, whoever is responsible, I think in talking about Lalique, um, one is forever being told he was a great Art Deco designer. Well, as I've mentioned in my previous talks, Lalique was Lalique. I mean, you know, he led the way um, and he trod his own path. But this is a wonderful design of these, these amazing angel fish. And, uh, and if ever there was a Deco, an Art Deco design, this is it. Now, what about this? Um, this is Tortu, and if, if you look very carefully at this grey vase, um, you can just about make out uh, what appear to be tortoise shells or turtle shells. I'm not quite sure myself. But uh, what is interesting about this glass is um, that um, in daylight it looks like this. And then, if we switch to the next slide, bang, there it is. Um, in um, artificial light, it changes colour. This is diochromatic glass, um, often referred to as Alexandrite glass. And uh, Lalit was in the forefront of dealing with um, scientists. He was a friend of Louis Pasteur. Um, he was also a friend of Marie Curie and lots of other scientific luminaries that he would be meeting in France uh, and in particular in Paris. So um, the next vase makes use of a very strong cobalt blue. This is Borrome. And um, Borrome... I, when you look at Lalique's catalogue of 1932, 
um, and it's worth finding a reprint of that. You can often find them um, on online for pretty reasonable money. You think, why did he call you know, these vases with, with these specific names? Well, um, Borome, uh, I discovered purely by accident when I was having a holiday in the Italian lakes, um, and I went to um, the Borromean Islands. Um, I think it was Isolda Madre. And when you're on the island there, what do you find? But peacocks. I mean, it was quite incredible because the minute I saw them, I think, whoa, René, that's where you got your inspiration. Um, but this wonderful deep cobalt blue is uh, is a particular favourite, again, with collectors. And let's have a look at, um, uh, at a selection of, of other birds because Lalique, here we go. Um, we're looking at Perouche uh, in green. And um, uh, Lalique has got this fascination with... Budgerigars. I mean, he turn they turn up in all sorts of dyes. They even turn up in his little sort of clocks, um, little bedside clocks, and, um, and described as inseparable. And, um, but either way, what is interesting about Perouche is that Lalique often did um, examples in a range of colours. So you've got a green one, and here is a red one. Okay, and if uh, if that didn't go with your curtains, what about this one? which is a blue one. The blue here is in more of a, an electric blue. Uh, but if I've got a, a favourite, I mean, from a, from a sculptural point of view, it's got to be this. It's serpent. I mean, this is just pure dynamite. I mean, that coil snake and, you know, you, you, it's a powerful reptile, a powerful reptile in every sense of the word. And I know some people hate snakes, but I always, as a small boy, wanted a pet snake. Don't ask me. I think it's something I wanted to take to school and, and scare Catherine Bradshaw, who used to sit next to me. Um, but but this is the, the ultimate. And the... I mean, I've not mentioned it yet, but could you imagine sticking gladioli in that vase? I mean, come on, come on. I mean, or any vase for that matter. I mean, I have been to collectors' homes and I've seen them with flowers in. And for me, it's the nearest thing to using, um, uh, let's say, an, an open-top Jaguar racing car as a skip. I mean, what's the point? No, these. This is an art object. It was. It. It. You know. Don't spoil it. It looks good enough as it is. So, uh, yeah, I do. I do hope. You know, come Christmas to find something about that size um, in the, the bottom of my stocking. It hasn't happened yet, but uh, we we live in hope. So moving on, we let's the the vase I'm going to show you now. Um, dates to 1929 and by 1929 Lalique um, seems to be veering more towards simple but heavy forms. What is interesting about this vase um, which is called Margaret um, and is in of quite a rare glass uh, this is topaz and topaz glass um, it tends to transluce into a kind of vibrant amethyst in certain lights. Well, it's all in the handles. The handles um, are densely sort of moulded with small birds and monks' foliage. Um, the handles would have looked A-OK -okay at the Paris Exposition of, of 1925, whereas the form might have been considered a little bit too heavy. So Lalique is moving towards what I, I've always referred to, um, not so much as Art Deco, but Art Modern. Um, a simplicity in form um, and, and and a heavier form. But I think that is just a, a, a stunning vase. I mean, it makes you simply of angular forms. It's, again, just a great piece of sculpture. Um, and then we get to um, a type of vase or a genre, if I can use that term, it's made using a, a process known as lost wax, or serpedu, as René would have said. Um, basically, you make um, whatever it is, your vase, you make it in wax, you then uh, encase it in fire clay, you then actually um, allow it to set solid, and once done, you then actually draw, bore a hole in the top and bore a hole in the base, 
and then you heat it, allowing all the wax inside to drip out. You then actually plug the base with more fire clay and then you're in a position, once that's set solid, to pour in molten glass. Uh, you then have to wait for the glass to uh, to cool, to cold. It's 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 important. This is called annealing. And so once that's happened, the only way you can get at the vase is by actually very carefully uh, chipping away and breaking uh, that mould all around it. So um, this was uh, on a programme, um, a, a road show. I remember it well is in Scotland. Um, and the lady told me that she'd bought it for a pound uh, at a car boot. Well, actually, she'd paid a pound for the plant that was in it and they gave her the sparse for free. True. Absolutely true. Uh, so I, I, I did... Um, I did have to tell her that it was worth at least £25,000. Got it slightly wrong insofar as when it went to auction without me knowing, by the way, uh, six months later, it made £30,000 hammer price. So she was delighted. I was delighted for her as well. Uh, but then um, I actually made a trip to this place. Uh, this is the Lalique Museum in Vingen, Vingen Sermoda. It's a stone's throw away uh, from uh, Lalique's glassworks that he uh, set up there in 1922 and uh, is still operating today. Uh, and I walked into the um, to look at the exhibits and what did I see? but the very same uh, vase that I, I'd seen there in Scotland is called uh, Fuel Fugere. Um, I mean, simply means, uh, for want of a better term, uh, fern leaves. And so um, if uh, you look at uh, the piece uh, side on, here's an extra image uh, just to clarify uh, what the sides look like. And um, I mean, it was, uh, it was just one of those chance meetings uh, it's happened to me before with various other objects and sooner or later when I get to Art Nouveau um, I'll be talking about Miss Scunthorpe. Yeah, that's one to watch. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, if you can make it to the, the museum um, then just wait till all this awfulness is over. Uh, it's closed at the moment uh, but well worth the effort. And um, it goes without saying, as always, if you're able to make a donation at the end of this uh, this talk which I realise has gone on for a little bit more than 10 minutes. But if you're still with me, um, it would be wonderful if you could just pull a pound out of your pocket, uh, send it on to the British Red Cross, who in turn are going to send it on to all those people fighting COVID-19 and, um, and doing a, 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 a wonderful, wonderful job. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, as always, take care of you and yours. Thank you.